Hey everybody, a few months ago, I put out a video where I tested the quote, world's best speakers from the Tech Ingredients YouTube channel. And it should be no surprise to those of you who are familiar with the Tech Ingredients channel, those speakers sounded amazing. I was really blown away by how good they were. If you missed that first video, I'll link to it here above my head. And a lot of comments came in from that video with people asking questions like, what happens when you paint them? Or can you cover them with a fabric? And how important is that shape that you had to cut them into? And how do they sound if you add a subwoofer? And how do they compare to some bookshelf speakers? And I had so many ideas, suggestions, comments, questions. I decided a follow-up video was the only way to address as many of those as I reasonably could. So in this video, we're gonna revisit the world's best speakers and I'm gonna try and answer as many of the questions that came from my viewers as I can. Now, before I get into the testing, if you're watching this video without headphones, I think you really should pause the video and go get a set of headphones and watch the rest of the video with those. There's gonna be a lot of nuance to the kind of sound testing that I'm doing. And if you're just watching this on a little phone speaker or in a laptop, even with fairly decent laptop speakers, you're gonna miss out a lot of it. You really do need to have headphones for what I'm gonna be doing. And most of that is because of how I'm going to be recording the sound these speakers produce. You see, right now, and in all of my videos up until now, I have recorded all of my audio with a lavalier mic, which is what you see on my shirt right now. However, for this video, I've built a binaural microphone. Now, a binaural microphone actually has two microphones in it, one on the left ear and one on the right ear. And these are actually mounted inside a set of silicone ears that mimic the shape of real human ears. And they are placed approximately the same distance apart as real human ears are on your head. And as a result, the microphones will pick up sound very much the same way that your actual head does if you were here, here in, in the room, room with me right now. In fact, I've just switched over to the binaural microphone and I'm certain that you can tell a difference. This is the room I'm going to be doing all of my testing in, and as you can probably hear, there's quite a bit of reverb and echo in this room. It's a somewhat large bedroom, and the walls are more or less blank, and so there's a lot of opportunity for sound to bounce around in here. To try and help mitigate that, I picked up a bunch of these foam acoustic panels, and I'm going to be sticking them to the walls in various areas just to try and bring down that level of reverb and echo. I'm not trying to create like an anechoic chamber or go completely overboard here with getting this room to have zero reverb or echo at all, but I am trying to bring that down just a little bit so that when we're doing the testing with the speakers, we're not hearing reverb quite so much. We're just getting the sound off the panels themselves. So this is what this room sounds like before I do any acoustic treatment to the walls. And this is what it sounds like now that I have finished doing some acoustic treatment to these walls and I'm completely set up and ready for my first test. I hope you can hear a difference just in the echo and the reverb. Again, if you're not listening with some headphones, I strongly recommend you put some in. If you missed how I treated this room and you're interested to know what I did to make that change, you can uh, hit this little link that's above my head right now and we'll go back to a prior video where I describe the entire process. Now, a bit of background about how I'm gonna test these speakers. Let's go over the items and the materials and the methodologies I'm gonna be using. Several people asked if they could see some response curves from these speakers. But I've elected to go in a different direction for several reasons. First off, I don't have the right equipment or setup to do good, reliable response curve measurements. And not only that, the majority of my audience isn't really going to necessarily get a lot of good, useful information out of response curves because, frankly, they're a little bit difficult to understand in the first place. Secondly, the best way to judge whether or not you like how a speaker sounds is to actually listen to it. And as I mentioned, I've gone through a lot of trouble and effort to try and get the very best recordings possible of all of these different speaker designs. Now, I can't have everybody out there in here in the room with me while I'm doing the testing. So I've set up what I hope will be the next best thing, that is some side-by-side -side comparisons. I'm gonna play exactly the same audio tracks through each of a dozen different speaker configurations. Then I'll splice the different speakers together during the playback so it cuts directly from speaker to speaker, giving your ear a chance to hone in on the different characteristics of each setup. For each test track, I will hop through the speakers in a different order, so you don't always hear the same two speakers against each other. I'm also using a large variety of music, so hopefully there's something in there for everybody. Up next, let me introduce the different speaker configurations I'll be testing. The first of these uh, Klipsch R41M bookshelf speakers, and I chose these specifically for our baseline testing because they're a pretty well-known, pretty decent bookshelf speaker. They're certainly not the best ones you can get in the world, but they're far from the worst either. 
Most people who have ever shopped for or listened to a decent set of bookshelf speakers probably considered these during their buying decisions. So we'll start with these as our baseline and then we'll compare all of our other tests against this. So these are the original panels from my first video and I'm going to be doing three separate tests with them in this video. The first is I'm going to set them up exactly how they were in the first video, that is with the exciters set two-fifths down from the top and two-fifths in from the left-hand side. Then I'm going to add a subwoofer to that original setup to see how that changes things. I think we all have a pretty good idea what that's going to do. And then the third test I'm going to do is to eliminate the subwoofer and instead add a second exciter directly to the center of the panel. So these boards are set up exactly the same way as the originals from my first video. The only change here is that I've wrapped them in a fabric to make them match your room a little bit better. Now I chose gray, but this fabric comes in all kinds of colors, and this is an extremely lightweight fabric that stretches quite easily, and I, I did that on purpose so that I could wrap it around the corners really nicely without having any creases showing on the front. Now as you can see from these shots, the fabric does move around an awful lot while these are running, and so perhaps if I were to do this again, I would maybe glue down the back of the fabric. I don't suspect that would make any difference to the way that these things sound. Now this set of panels is exactly how it came from the store. I haven't done anything to the surface, I didn't round any corners, I didn't come anywhere near it with some sandpaper of any kind. All I did is installed the mounting pins in the top and then attached the exciter at the two-fifths down and two-fifths in from the side position. I want to use these to compare against this set that is exactly like this except I did sand the front and back to see if sanding really makes any kind of difference at all. This set of panels is the second half of deciding whether or not sanding the surface is very important. I did not round the corners off, but I did sand the surface, unlike the other set where I didn't do anything to the panel at all. So this one has been sanded on the front and the back, and the exciter again is at the two-fifths down and the two-fifths in position. I had a lot of questions about the shape of the panels, if that square with the rounded corners that I demonstrated in the first video was super important, or if they could maybe explore some different shapes and how much that would impact the sound. I had people question whether it could be an oval or just a circle or maybe a teardrop shape or a, maybe a heart or something really wild like a star or a spiral or all kinds of ideas were suggested. So in this setup I've got a couple of panels that I've cut into triangles. Now other than that shape they are identical to the original panels and I'm doing that so I can determine how much the shape affects the sound. So these have been rounded with the same radius as the original panels with the rounded corners. The only change is that they've been cut into the triangular shape. The exciter is still placed two-fifths down from the top and two-fifths in from the leftmost edge right here. These panels started as identical panels to the originals from my first video, that is rounded corners and sanded on the front and back sides. The big change here though is that I've wrapped these in a medium weight fabric that is also quite stretchy and has a little pattern of lines in it. I wanted to see how this would affect things and how this fabric would compare to the other more lightweight fabric that I'm also going to do. Now to attach this fabric and the lighter weight fabric, I use these really short little tiny pins and just stretched the fabric around the panel and attached it with the pins. I tried some fabric glue as I was a little concerned about the weight of the pins affecting the performance of the panel, but the fabric glue was pretty useless on the foam, it just refused to stick at all, so we went with these pins. And honestly, the pins weigh next to nothing. They're very, very thin, they're very lightweight, and I don't expect that they're going to affect the foam at all. The most common question hands down on my last video on these panels was, yeah, that's great, they sound fantastic, but can you paint them? The pink is just a terrible color, it'll never look good in my house. Well, so this particular set of panels I've spray painted with a flat gray color. Of course you can choose any color you want, or even maybe use a stencil or some other design or pattern. And I did four coats, and I did very light coats, holding the can about 16 to 20 inches or so from the panel. You don't want to put it on too heavy, at least that's what I've read, so we'll hear what these sound like as well. One of the other most common questions I received on the prior video was the best way to mount the panels in the first place. In the prior video I hung them from some string, but a lot of people asked about, well, what about if you just take that exciter and stick it to something uh, rigid, like a wall or a ceiling or a post? 
The idea there is, and I think this came from a shot in the prior video, that showed the exciter and the panel from the side like this. And as it's making noise, both the exciter and the panel are moving. And I think the idea behind this question is that if you could hold that exciter still, then the panel would move a whole lot more because more energy would get imparted into the panel. I'm not sure I agree with that just because of Newton's third law with the you know equal and opposite reaction. With that exciter moving a whole bunch already, that panel is moving just the exact same amount. And I'm not sure that by sticking the exciter onto something rigid, it'll impart more energy or a crisper tone out of the panel. But we're gonna find out. This particular set that I built here is mounted exactly that way. There is a screw in the big crossbar that goes across here, and there is a matching thread in the back of the exciter. And the panels are just spun onto those screws, so the exciter is gonna hold very still, and we'll see how the panels sound. So those are all the different speaker configurations I'll be testing. Now there were some people who were unhappy that I used Bluetooth for my original test setup in the last video. So in this video, I've got a different amplifier and I'll be using a wired connection. I chose this amplifier as it has extremely good ratings, is relatively inexpensive so I could afford to buy one, and it actually sounds much better than an older Sony home theater amp that I also tested for this. All the speakers you'll hear in a moment were connected to this exact amp with the bass and treble controls left the same throughout the testing. The only dials I had to adjust on the amp were the volume levels because I tested the Klipsch bookshelf speakers first and you can see here they registered about 94 to 95 decibels. But the flat panels with the same amplification settings registered 99 to 100 decibels which is substantially louder. So I had to turn the amp down just a bit for the flat panels to match my microphone settings on the camera. But one thing I learned right off the bat is that the flat panels are substantially louder than the Klipsch bookshelf speakers at the same amplification level. Finally, all the panels were supported with a very lightweight fishing line. This was hooked through rubber bands so that they were allowed to vibrate as freely as possible. I tried a few different ways to mount them and this worked the best and was repeatable for all the flat panel designs. Alright, I've yammered for long enough. Let's get into the testing so you can hear all the different speakers.
told you I'ma do me Why you hating on me? It's not adding up I do roll like a Mack truck Cut your heart, I'm like Copper Farm and go act up Got the scars, I was cold hearted, and now I'm backed up Keep it real, I do this once a month, I don't rap much I just take the money and go stack up Only buy a car, a car, take it, tatted up Author of the book, it don't matter much You wanna climb me, I put the letters up No fault, I done doubled up on the workload I think I fell in love with the bankroll Pray up, get money, then we lay low Well, that's going to do it for all of the testing in this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of these different ideas being put to the test, and I hope you listened with a really critical ear, particularly while wearing headphones, because I'm not going to tell you what I thought sounded the best. I'm going to leave that to you. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments which one sounded great, which one sounded terrible. Was it the Klipsch bookshelf speakers that were the best, or was it one of the panel setups? Was it needing a subwoofer, or was the subwoofer not really all that needed? Tell me about it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you there. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know about that with the thumbs up button down below. And if you've got an idea, suggestion, or critique for something that I could do differently or in the future, you can let me know about that down in the comments as well. And if you'd like to see more content like this, you can always think about subscribing, but there's never any pressure there for me, of course. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Uh -huh.